What's the most wholesome experience you've had with a stranger? Crouching Tiger. Hidden Dragon just came out in theaters. I had been planning to go see it on my next day off. I didn't have a car so relied on the bus. The day of the movie came and there was a snowstorm. I walked downtown to get the bus but there was a sign saying all buses cancelled due to snow. I was super bummed out and walked over to the local coffee shop. I ordered a coffee and was telling the owner how disappointed I was that I couldn't get to the movies. There was an older woman sitting in the shop and she overheard us. She looked at me and said, I really want to see that movie too. Let's go. I'll drive. So that the day me and a perfect stranger went out to lunch and to see a movie together. About a year later I started seeing this guy in town and his downstairs neighbor was the lady who took me to the movies all those months earlier. We had stopped by her house for her to get a sweater before the movies. I told the guy, me and your neighbor went to see Crouching Tiger together. He was like that was you. She went on and on about how cool it was to go to the movies wu. My car declined at a fast food place a couple years ago. The manager saw it happening and came up and gave me the food anyway. It may have come from a f this establishment mood rather than the unrelenting kindness of his heart, but either way it really made my day. I was using crutches at the time after an ankle injury. Got off the tram to go to uni and hobbled straight into a surprise Melbourne springstorm. Guy with very limited English walked me from the tram stop to my class holding an umbrella over me the entire walk about 10 minutes. One of those lovely, warm fuzzy memories. Once went out to a restaurant for a meal. Earlier the same day we found out that one of my partner's relatives, someone they were close to, had killed themselves. We thought it would be a good idea to get out of the house and distract ourselves. Our waitress was lovely and spoke to us throughout the meal as it was quiet and she seemed fun. At the end of the meal, and many wines. My partner was visibly emotional not crazy. Just sad looking the waitress asked us if we were okay and saw that my partner was upset, so she asked again. We told her what had happened. She was shocked and it was obvious she really felt for my partner. A few minutes later, she came over with some limoncello shots and said it's on the house which was unexpected and lovely. We protested a bit but she said I'm managing tonight. It's little things like this that make me like working here. Because I can make your night a bit better what a legend. It gets even more lovely though, we asked her for the bill shortly after. And when it arrived, it read pound zero hundred she had discounted the whole bill putting it through as wastage. We were shocked and had a tearful goodbye with her after many protests and finding it unbelievable. We'd had a three-course meal, wine and beer, loads of sides, we went to town and she just covered it because my partner was sad. I'll remember it forever. She could have kept herself to herself and ignored us. But that moment of kindness meant too much to us that day and turned it from a shitty day to a less shitty day. I moved 1,000 miles away from everything I knew after graduating college 16 years ago. Back then I was pretty homesick, struggling in my career and figuring things out so I felt pretty lost in life. One day I was walking around downtown Orlando when an older man probably in his mid-80s stopped me. He handed a piece of paper that he was carrying to me and said you seem like a good person with a good heart, it will be alright. Then he just walked away, looking down. That piece of paper was a copy of a handwritten page by him filled with dozens and dozens of sayings, illustrations and quotes from all over the world regarding love and hope. Tears came immediately and I put it away to read later that day. It stayed on my wall in my home for the better part of 10 years until I moved again. Now it's been 16 years since then and sure he's moved on to the next world by now. I still have that page. Take it out occasionally and think about that wonderful man from many years ago who taught me about pure and genuine random acts of kindness right along with love and hope. He was an absolute blessing to me and to our world. Thank you good sir. You were a beautiful soul. I was really drunk and started puking in the trash can in the women's bathroom since there was a line to get to a toilet. One of the girls in line held my hair up and rubbed my back, telling me I'd be okay. I drunkenly told her I loved her. I may also have been crying. Wherever you are, bathroom girl, I still love you. When I was 18 I had a friend in the hospital with brain cancer. His time was limited. I visited him when I could. He was kind of hippie alternative punk. I wore a leather jacket and had long hair. I walked to his room. A nurse saw me. Without saying a word she walked to me and gave me a long comforting hug. That's how I knew he passed. This happened when I was around 9 or 10. I was out riding my bike with my mom, and halfway through the trail, my bike breaks down. Anyway we couldn't carry the bike back home since it would take hours, so we were just stranded in that field. There were a few people on the trail who saw our inconvenience. 
but either they didn't have any bike knowledge to know how to fix it, or they couldn't be bothered to care. At least an hour had passed before this old man, and I mean like real old he looked to be around 80 approached us and fixed our bike free of charge. He got his hands down to the grease, and eventually after a few minutes I could start pedaling again. I thought that was a really wholesome moment, his kindness and coolness to our situation, and that's why this memory sticks to me I guess. I had a knock on my door and when I opened it, there was a stranger with a gift card to a local garden store for me. Apparently her kid had been pinching tulips from my garden every day to give to his mom and they wanted to pay for them. Once they figured out whose garden they were coming from, I had thought squirrels were doing it and had regretted planting them the year before. Not being able to enjoy them, I spent the gift card on more bulbs. I was traveling from the south of England to the north of Scotland to start a new job the next morning. I had taken a train up to London and was supposed to get on an early morning flight from Heathrow. The bus to the airport however, was cancelled and I had to make my own way using a series of night buses. However it was about 2.30 am, and my phone was dead, and I had never used London's night buses before. I was young and a little scared. Standing in the middle of Victoria trying to figure out the faded bus schedule when a woman came up to me and asked are you alright love? And I explained through tears that I thought I was going to miss my flight and didn't even have an Oyster card. She looked up my route on her phone, wrote down all the possible variations of buses and trains that I would need to take, including the times. She waited with me the entire time, like 20 minutes. Then when the bus came up she paid for my fare no cash on London buses. I got out and looked to her and she shrugged and said oh I'm not getting the bus. You just looked like you needed someone. I think about her every once in a while. And I'm incredibly grateful for her. When I was 16, I'd taken my mom's old Pontiac Bonneville to the movies and I was in such a hurry that I forgot to turn off the lights. When I came out, the car was dead but someone left a set of jumper cables on the hood with a note that said, I hope you make it home safely. I've never ever forgotten about that, since then I've tried to pay that kindness forward any way I can. I was in London and was supposed to be flying home that day. Walking down the street with my two suitcases towards the tube station nice and early on my way to Heathrow with plenty of time. Silly me didn't realize that when the signs said there is going to be a tube strike on the day you fly home, that means the tube is completely closed. I thought it just meant delays or something. I don't know. I start walking toward the bus station a few blocks away desperately trying to come up with a plan B. A young man comes up to me and offers to help carry my suitcases. He asks where I'm going, and I say Heathrow which is an hour away at this point in time until my flight is running short. It starts raining. He says you'll never make it there on time on the buses. He calls me a cab, then finds a little awning where we can sit and wait for the cab and stay out of the rain. He lets me use his phone to transfer money to pay for the cab mine didn't have service outside my home country. We just sat and chatted for 30 minutes waiting for this cab, and he made me feel so much less panicked. I just couldn't believe the kindness he showed to some random person on the street, and I've never been able to find him again online to thank him. I was in the hospital, knowing I'd be there for at least a week, and possibly more. I was sick of hospital food, so I went downstairs to go across the street to the hospital subway. I was pretty far back in the hospital, 6th floor, back side of the building, labyrinth of staircases and hallways to get out the front door. The walk from there to subway took almost 15 minutes, even though it was just across the street. I waited in line, got up to the counter to order, and realized I'd left my wallet in my room. I ordinarily keep my wallet in my back pocket, but there was no need to in the hospital since I was in my room most of the time. I was exhausted mentally by that point from the stay, told them I'd forgotten the wallet, and turned to make the trek all the way there and back again. All of a sudden, a nurse behind me bought my food for me, saving me the trip and the money. I thanked him profusely. That was years ago, but I will never forget that act of kindness.